This video is about the sine, cosine, and full Fourier series, which are alternative methods of finding the Fourier series representation of a function. These methods are used when the function presented is not defined on a periodic interval, and includes the process of extending the function periodically first, before finding its Fourier series. I'll be talking about these methods, and also be doing examples. If you'd like to skip to the examples, I have links to which parts of the video they begin at in the description. The Fourier series representation of a function is that function represented as an infinite sum of periodic functions, those functions being sine and cosine. Usually when asked to compute the Fourier series of a function, you're given some function and a periodic interval on which it's defined. When given a function f of x that is not defined on a periodic interval, that is, instead of being on negative p to p, it's from 0 to p, we essentially extend that function to make it defined on a periodic interval so we're capable of finding its Fourier series. We have three different choices on how to periodically extend this function that results in a new function that's either even, odd, or neither. This is why the sine and cosine extension are also referred to as odd and even extensions. For a sine extension, you'll reflect the function across the origin. For a cosine extension, you'll reflect the function across the y-axis. And for a full Fourier extension, you will make a repeat of the function in the quadrant next to it. Once you have chosen which extension you are using, you will have a new function that is defined on a periodic interval, so you're capable of finding its Fourier series now. If you are using either the sine or cosine extension, the next step is to simply find the Fourier series of that function the usual way. You do that by first deciding if your new function is even or odd. If you did the cosine extension, your function will always be even. Because it's even, b sub n equals 0 and a naught equals 2 over p, the integral from 0 to p f of x dx, and a sub n equals 2 over p, integral from 0 to p f of x cosine of n pi x over p dx. Notice that a naught and a sub n are the same as they would be if you were finding the Fourier series of an even function. The Fourier coefficients stay the same. This means if you had an even function defined on negative p to p, its Fourier series would be equal to the cosine series of the same function defined on 0 to p. If you did the sine extension, your function will always be odd. It is odd, so a0 equals 0 and a sub n equals 0. b sub n equals 2 over p integral from 0 to p f of x sine of n pi x over p. Notice that b sub n is the same as it would be if you were taking the Fourier series representation of an odd function. The Fourier coefficients also stay the same. This means that if you had an odd function defined on a periodic interval and found its Fourier series representation, this representation would be exactly the same as the sine series of the same function defined on 0 to p. While if you take the cosine series of the same odd function defined on 0 to p, you will get a different series representation. I'll show this in the example. While the Fourier coefficients of the sine and cosine extension are the same as the Fourier coefficients used normally for a periodic function, this is not true for the full Fourier extension. With the full Fourier extension, you are given a function that is neither even nor odd, and due to its periodicity, it has an extra factor of 2 in the sine and cosine functions. So your new Fourier series expansion looks like this, a0 over 2 plus the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a sub n sine of 2n pi x over p plus b sub n cosine of 2n pi x over p, where a0 is normal, a0, and the a sub n is 2 over p integral from 0 to p f of x times cosine of 2 n pi x over p, and b sub n is 2 over p integral from 0 to p of f of x sine of 2 n pi x over p. The reason for the extra factor of 2 present in the full Fourier series is its periodicity. If you look at the sine extension, you'll notice that from negative p to p is one period. You will also notice this for the cosine extension, but for the full Fourier extension, you will notice that one period is from negative p to 0, and another period from 0 to p, meaning that it is not p periodic. It is p over 2 periodic. So where p would normally be, you plug in a p over 2, which results in a 2 being present in the numerator. The first example will be finding the Fourier series of the function x defined on negative pi to pi. Since the function is already defined on a periodic interval, I don't have to periodically extend it. 
So I'll start by noticing that it's an odd function, which means that a0 and a sub n are 0. Then I'll compute b sub n, which is 2 over pi times the integral from 0 to pi of sine of n pi x over pi, which cancels to be sine of n x. I will do parts once, then plug in the limits to end up with b sub n. Then I plug in my b sub n into the solution format, and I end up with the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 2 times negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n times sine of nx. If you'd like a more in-depth example, I have a video that's just on the Fourier series. My second example will be finding the sine series of the function x defined on 0 to pi. Since the function is defined on an interval that's not periodic, we must first periodically extend it before finding its Fourier series. We can choose to extend it using the sine, cosine, or full Fourier extension, but for this example I'm using the sine extension. Now it's possible to find its Fourier series. Our new function is odd, so a0 and a sub n are 0, and b sub n is 2 over pi times the integral of x times sine of nx, because the pi's cancel. Next I do parts and plug in my limits and simplify my b sub n. Now I have my b sub n and plug it into the solution for format for the Fourier series, and get the sum of n goes from 1 to infinity of 2 times negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n times sine of nx. Notice that this answer is exactly the same as the answer to my previous example. This is because once we choose the odd extension of the function x, it matched the original function of x defined from negative pi to pi. And since the Fourier coefficients for the sine series are the same as the Fourier coefficients for the normal Fourier series, it ends up giving us the same solution. My third example will be finding the cosine series of the function x defined on 0 to pi. Since the function is defined on an interval that's not periodic, we must first periodically extend it before finding its Fourier series. We are choosing to extend it using the cosine extension. Now that it's defined on a periodic interval, we can find its Fourier series. Our new function is even, so b sub n is 0. a0 and a sub n are the usual ones we would use when finding the Fourier series for an even function. a0 is 2 over pi times the integral from 0 to pi of x dx. We end up with pi as our a0 a sub n is 2 over pi times the integral from 0 to pi of x times cosine of nx dx. Next, you do parts and plug in your limits and end up with both your a0 and a sub n. You get your cosine series, x is pi over 2 plus 2 over pi times the sum from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over n squared minus 1 over n squared, all times cosine of nx. Notice that this answer is different from our other answers. But if you calculated the Fourier series of the absolute value of x from negative pi to pi, you would get the same series as the one we have just found. My last example is finding the full Fourier series of the function x defined on 0 to pi. Since the function is on an interval that's not periodic, we must first periodically extend it before finding its Fourier series. Extending it through the full Fourier extension, you end up with this new function that is neither even nor odd. Also notice that the function is not p-periodic. It is p over 2 periodic. This is why our Fourier coefficients are not the same as the Fourier coefficients of the sine, cosine, and usual Fourier series. Wherever a p would normally be plugged in, we plug in a p over 2, which gives us an extra factor of 2 in the numerator of our trig functions. Now we find a0, which hasn't changed since there aren't any trig functions present in the formula for a0. You end up with pi, which is not surprisingly the same a0 as the one in our last example. Our a sub n is going to be 2 over pi times the integral from 0 to pi of x times cosine of 2n pi x over pi, which reduces to 2nx. Next, you do parts to solve the integral and plug your limits into your terms. The sine term vanishes, as sine of 2n pi will always be 0 for any value of n. Also, the other limit is 0, so that term is insignificant. Cosine of 2n pi will always be 1, regardless of n, and cosine of 0 is also 1. So you end up with 1 over 4n squared minus 1 over 4n squared and ultimately get 0 for a sub n. For b sub n, you do 2 over pi times the integral from 0 to pi of x times sine of 2nx and do parts. Then plug in your limits into your terms. Sine vanishes due to the 2n pi as well as the 0. Cosine of 2n pi is 1 regardless of n and the 0 makes that term 0, so there's only one term. It's negative pi over 2n, which gets simplified to become negative 1 over n. 
Now you have your A0, A sub n, and B sub n, and you can plug them into the full Fourier solution, which remember is slightly different than that of the other series solutions due to the extra factor of 2. You end up with pi over 2 plus the sum from 1 to infinity of negative 1 over n times sine of 2nx.